Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Lisa Cotter and today we're doing a Distress Ink Watery Background. Of course, with the month of May, it's Mermaid and I thought a watery background tutorial would be fantastic for my channel. So a year ago, I actually did this page here. Now this is my own colouring page that I printed out myself. And I did this Distress Ink background for this page. Now, this is using two different colours, Distress Inks, and then a little bit of water. Now, the Mermaid here is done with alcohol markers. I use the Artex ones. I also went in with a bit of Prismacolor colour pencils for the hair and face shading. And Posca pen. And I thought this background would be fantastic for us all to do. Now, this page here is available on my Google Documents for free for you all to download and enjoy it yourself. Um, so I'll put a link in the description below where you can grab your own. And there is two other Mermaid pages there for free as well. Um, so feel free to use them and colour them in. And let me know what you think. And definitely um, show me your pages. I'd love to see them. So I thought next week would actually do a colour along based on this image here that I did. Um, using alcohol markers and distress ink for the background. But today we're actually going to take a look at distress ink. And do a bit of a watery background for practice. So what I've done today is I sat down and had a bit of a practice run before I did this video. Now this is my Spring Hill paper and the top one here, these two, are actually just Distress Inks. The bottom one here is Distress Ink Oxide. Um, but today we're actually just going to use the Distress Inks. Now the reason I did four here is on this side here these two i actually dried it off i did the water effects that you will learn soon and i block dried it with a bit of paper towel on this side i actually dried it off with my handy little heat gun here um, and just dried it off which is just as quick and of course both look pretty much the same so either way of drying it off um, works so we'll put that aside and we'll look at what we need for this tutorial so first off you will need paper of course um, so this paper I'm using is the Fabriano paper it is a little bit thicker than the Spring Hill paper now I also like to have a bit of a page to do some blotting on um, to wipe off the excess ink. Um, but I'll talk about that in a minute. So have a spare piece of paper as well. This is the Spring Hill one. Now, your Distress Inks, I'm actually using the Peacock Feathers as well as the Cracked Picachios. Now, I like to have these little sponges here. These are the little applicators. And these are fantastic because it comes um, with lots of refills of these sponges. And you can just Velcro them off and change the actual sponge. So I have um, every colour of my Distress Ink has its own sponge. And these are washable. Um, just wash them and let them dry naturally. And this one, of course, is for the green one. Now, if you don't have this, this that's okay. You can actually use sponges, little um, makeup sponges or craft sponge. Um, or you can actually use these little finger sponges here. Um, I got these recently from Tamu and they work as well. Um, I use these for 
um, a lot of different things for my gelatos as well as my um, soft pastels. Now, I also like to have this little misting spray here. This is the Tombow one, but any little spray bottle will do. I like to have a smaller compact one because we don't need a lot of water for this. I like to have a little bit of water here. And I have this little dropper. This is a miniature one. <laughs> um, you can just pick up the water like that and then drip it on. So it's a good little dropper for that. And I have a toothbrush here. Um, this is a toothbrush purchased just for crafts, not for brushing my teeth. I wouldn't be doing that. <laughs> And of course, paper towel. Um, having some paper towel on the side is always good for blotting the water. Now, as I said, I like to have a spare piece of paper as well. So I can actually, when I first grab the ink off these little inks here, I can wipe a little bit off because it goes like this first off. And you don't want that hard lines on your page. Now, these are the little inks here. Now, I've only got the miniature ones. Um, I haven't, I would love the big ones, but you can actually buy refills for these. Um, so I may buy some refills um, because these are just handy that you can actually refill them. So the first color we're going to go in with is the Cracked Picachios. And that is that one there. Now, first off, I like to get my sponge and get a bit of colour on there. Um, as Of course, it won't be as much. Now, I like to blot it off on my... If I show you what I mean, on my blotting paper there. So you're not going to get that big boost of... thing. And just going in with a circular motion. Similar to how you actually do your colour pencils in circles, do the same with your sponge. Because we want to build the colour up. We don't want a huge excess of colour straight away. Um, we're here to actually just make a nice watery soft background. And if you keep moving in a circular motion, you're not going to get any harsh lines. But it's a nice soft colour, this one. Which I like. Because when you add the water, you can actually see the different colours come through. Now, this can be done in colouring books. Um... Now, with colouring books, I would definitely test in the back of the paper, in the book, um, if there's a tester page. But um, I wouldn't use as much water if you're actually doing it in a colouring book. Um, I know they work really lovely in Kirby Rosane's books, Hannah Carlson's, Maria Trolls probably as well. But they can bleed through if you've used too much water. So that is, I think, enough of the cracked Picasso for now. Now we'll put this here and then we're going to go into with the blue. Now, again, I'm going to use my blotting paper just to wipe off, just tap it on the actual page to get any excess off. You don't want it too dark straight away. Um, because it can do harsh lines. Now, this is a much darker colour than that green. Um, so I like to actually go in and just gently do it. Sort of like a cloud. And this is a great way to do clouds as well. Um, just do wispy parts. It looks beautiful as a background. But of course, we want this sea greenish sort of colour. 
and with this it works really well so by keeping in a circular motion it's going to blend free now of course at the end we'll actually go in with some more of the green to darken up some of those areas but I don't want um, don't want too dark we just want it that nice green And it's fantastic that these are available with refills because it just makes it so you're not having to rebuy the whole ink again. So that is that colour. And then I'm going to do a bit more of our cracked Picasso. It's actually here. I think I'm going to have to get refills. <laughs> There are only little ones though. So I'll put the lids back on. And these are stackable as well, which is fantastic. So you can stack them and put them like that, which is great. So that's the sponges there. And now we're going to work with a little bit of water. So of course, bring your thing over. Now the first, what we're going to do is do our mister now i don't want too much if you add too much water you will get the bleed through so we don't want too much water and we just want a nice speckled effect going on um if you can see there that sort of speckled effect so by holding it up a bit higher then your page we don't need to press it too hard you'll get this nice speckled effect and you can do a couple of sprays there of course you can see a lot more over there um, but that's all we're going to do there but as you can see there's some little white dots I might do a little bit more here and just does that wonderful effect now i'm going to show you how to use the little dropper now these are really good now i got these from crafts online i believe it was and there was these little droppers which is great when you don't need much water so with this i like to just drop a little bit of water i don't like to press too much um, just a little bit. You can actually drip some water onto your fingers and drip it that way if you want to control it more. But we're just doing little drops. And I might do one over here. And one up there. Now, I'm going to squirt that back in. But what we're going to do is we're going to gently pick up the page and move those droplets around slightly. I don't want them totally dripping, but I like to move it around to give it sort of this watery effect while the water's still on the page. And as you can see, they go a little bit goopy, a little bit watery. And as I said, the colors really shine through, especially the green there. Now. With the toothbrush, get a little bit of water on your toothbrush and dap it off. Of course, you don't want too much. You can actually just bang the there and do little water sprites. You can flick some there and you'll get more water effects that way. But um, I like to do it with a little mister. So if you don't have a mister, you can use a toothbrush. Um, the mister works really well. Um, you can wet your fingers. Don't worry about my grubby fingers. 
distress ink it does wash off with soap but you can actually drip it on and even flick it just have fun with it and that's what I love about doing a distress ink background you can have fun with it now, of course, you can leave it like this to dry overnight or you can gently go in. Now, we don't want to wipe off too much of that effect. Like, look at that going on there. Um, that's really cool. Um, and that's what's brilliant about Distress Inks. Um, the actual... I like doing a little bit... If you want to go up closer you will get sort of more of an effect. But we don't want to wipe off too much. So that looks so cool. And then you can just wipe gently, gently. And you get this sort of effect here. Now, as I said, you can leave that overnight or you can use your heat gun here to actually dry it off and that works really well as well so this is what it looks like when it's dry isn't that beautiful i am so pleased with it now as i've mentioned not everyone does have a craft heat gun but you can always use a hair dryer instead or you can just blot it with paper towel and then leave it overnight to dry and the next morning it would be dry but the effects it creates is just stunning. Um, I love this speckled effect here that you get using a mister. And then, of course, using the dropper, getting those bigger droplets and then moving the page. So it sort of gets this bloom effect going on, which sort of reminds me of coral there. Um, I really love it. Um, I love the colours. Um, it's just beautiful. And of course, you could do this as a galaxy background. There could be many different things you do. Um, and it's a lot of fun. So, of course, we used the Tim Holtz Distress Inks. Now, these are the mini ones. We used Peacock Feathers and the Cracked Potatoes. And as I said, these are the mini size. Now, they usually come in a pack of, I believe, five in a pack. And there's different um, ones you can get, all different colours. Now, they do have full size like this size here. Now, this one here is this Distress Ink Oxide. So, of course, it looks like that. And it's a bit darker than these ones. Now... Um, it comes in that size as well. Now you can get refills. I do not have any refills at the moment. I will definitely have to pick some up um, of my favourite colours because these are really fun for backgrounds. Um, and this is the sort of effect you can get. Um, it's just really relaxed fun. You can use this for cards, um, for anything really. It's really lovely. So I hope this tutorial has helped someone else and let me know in the comments below if it's been helpful and I can't wait to do the colour along next week. That'll be a lot of fun. Um, so get your alcohol markers ready and your distress ink if you have them. If you don't, don't worry, just watch along for a bit of fun and grab your free colouring pages there. Um, I'd love to know that other people are colouring in my colouring pages. So if you do colour in any of my colouring pages, just let me know and send me a link so I can see those pages. So again, thank you so much for watching. Um, I really appreciate it. Press like and subscribe and come back soon for more videos. Bye.